Dear friends, welcome to this question-answer series presented by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. Dr. Philip has spent his whole life answering young and old on an unbelievably wide range of subjects. His ultimate aim is to help you to find answers to your questions and even doubts. In turn this will help you in multiple ways. Dr. Philip keeps posting question answers regularly. Many of these can be very helpful to you. Do not miss any of them. Please subscribe to our channel and you will get notice of each and every video as it is posted. It is easy to subscribe. Below this video you will see a subscribe icon. Please click it. Please also click to bell icon there to confirm your subscription. That is all. You will never miss any of these life transforming videos. God bless you. Welcome to everyone who is here in Brethren Theological Institute English classes. Uh, thanks to uncle who led us in opening prayer. Thanks to Ashish and Abhishek for leading in songs. Ashish and Abhishek are Dr. Sanish Sharian's children. Please pray that Lord may bless both of these young men much. I thank you for all your prayers for our personal matters. Dr. Sanish Sharian is not the uh, uh, normal yet. Physically and mentally he is normal. <laughs> when I say he is not normal yet, his eyes are not normal yet. Uh, doctor has given him medication for few more days. Uh, our ministry, uh, our joint ministries involve a lot of load on the eyes and therefore Please continue to pray that he might be healed completely. Uh, I am deeply thankful to all of you who prayed for my hand. Uh, much, I am much, much, much better than what I used to be in the last few weeks. And I thank God for that. Many of you know about my father. He is 91 years old. Dad is living with us and yesterday he had a very severe breathing problem but uh, I was able to put him on oxygen immediately and about after about an hour he became normal after that he did not have any problem he had normal food with us in at night and he has some tiredness but otherwise he is normal since he's 91, episodes of weaknesses can attack any time. And looking after him, we are two senior citizens. I will complete 68 in April. My wife will complete 67 in January. So we are not as young as we used to be. Looking after a senior citizen is a struggle. So please pray that the Lord may give strength to us. We are all thankful to all of you who have been regularly inquiring about my health or our health. I see one or two new people here in this group and I welcome all of them. Many of you have not written your full names or places and therefore it becomes difficult to recognize exactly who you are. I would def definitely want a wider number of brothers to lead us in opening and closing prayer. But since many of you mention only your first name, and since some of you mention only mobile name, and still others mention only initials, I sometimes struggle to find who is who. So. Um, please, uh, uh, it would be very kind of you if you can write your full name. It will help me to invite more people for opening and closing prayer. Also, the new ones, if you are not part of the Brethren Theological Institute group, I want to remind you, Monday Malayalam classes and Tuesday English classes are run by Brethren Theological Institute. 
BTI was started by Dr. Sanish Chiriyan and me a long time ago. We were initially offering lessons through internet, but now it is strictly through Zoom. We have a WhatsApp group and from time to time, many questions and answers and resources are posted there. Thank you very much, Brother Johnson John, who has posted my phone number in the comment box. He is another one of those enthusiastic persons. Whenever I mention Bible verses, he posts references in the comment box so that nobody misses those references. At my request, he no longer po posts the full verse because I want all of you to open your Bibles and read the full verse. Or at least I want you to note down those verses, those references in your diary to be checked later. We have been studying Bibliology. What does the Bible say about itself? As introduction, I told you that not everyone who claims to be a Christian is a real Christian. And to illustrate it, I mentioned the example of fake currency notes. When there, there is a lot of fake currency notes, there will be, uh, there, when there is a lot of real currency notes, there will be many fakes also. A far more dangerous area is that of medicines. It is estimated that in some parts of India, as much as half of the allopathic medicines sold are fakes. Not everywhere in India, but in certain parts of India where the law is very lax and where people, shopkeepers can easily procure all what they want without a proper documentation. There, fakes are very common. I also mentioned an area and that is the area of old coins. All of you know about stamp collection. Similar to stamp collection, I also told you that there is coin collection. India has produced coins for the last 3000 years. Let me show you a cleaner coin today. Last week, I did not have a clean British India coin. This is a British India silver coin. This was used in India up to 1947. In 1947, when India became free, we demonetized all British currencies. This British India rupee is made up of 11 grams of pure silver. And like stamps, people who collect coins, they had great demand for British India coins. And the British India coin that I showed you right now, minted in the name of Queen Victoria, very difficult because of the shine, very difficult to show the image. This coin was selling for somewhere between 1,400 to 1,800 rupees. Today in the market, it is available for 800 rupees. What's the problem? What you get for 800 is a thousand percent fake made of silver. And since it is made of uh, almost silver, not pure silver, but almost silver, a person who sells for 800 rupees, he puts a 100 rupee profit in his pocket and therefore such coins have proliferated. So whether it is currency, whether it is uh, ancient coins, whether it is allopathic medicines, fakes do flood the market. In the same way, Christian faith, 
Christian churches means a lot of money and a lot of profit and a lot of position and therefore a large number of fakes have come up. I mentioned number of them. I will not go into details, but let me mention the names. One fake is made up of ritualistic churches. Second fake is made up of radical churches. Third fake is made up of neo-orthodox churches. Fourth fake is made up of neo-evangelicals. The fifth one, which is neither genuine nor fake, it is partially genuine and partially fake, is known as evangelical, evangelical Christians. They believe in salvation by grace through faith, but they don't believe in doctrine of creation and a lot of other things. The fifth category, conservative or fundamentalist Christians, they are the people who accept the Bible as it is. Now, as I mentioned in my last class, the word fundamentalist has been misused by newspapers. Please remember, fundamentalist does not mean narrow-minded. Fund Instead of using the word narrow-minded, they use the word fundamentalist. That is a wrong usage. Fundamentalist is a good word and it means those people who hold on faithfully to the fundamentals of faith. We are people who hold on faithfully to the fundamentals of faith. And we are the genuine Christians. Another name for fundamentalist is conservative. And still another name for fundamentalist is orthodox, not neo-orthodox, just orthodox. This is different from the orthodox church in Kerala. Orthodox means those who teach straight doctrines. So all those churches and people who are listening to me today, they all come from churches where the fundamentals of the word of God are taught. If there is anyone here who does not come from a conservative or fundamentalist church, please try to understand the difference and please see if you can go to a conservative church in your town because you will be far more blessed there by God. Okay. I gave you some examples of conservative and fundamentalist churches. The majority of people who are attending classes today are brethren. Brethren are a conservative and fundamentalist group, but they are not the only conservative or fundamentalist group. There are a lot of fundamentalist and independent Baptists. There are numerous independent churches in India, numerous churches that identify themselves as local churches. And also many, not all, but many Presbyterian churches. They are all conservative or fundamentalist in nature. You may ask, uh, brother, uh, can you tell what, how to uh, identify a church, whether it is a conservative church? Yes. Number one, they believe in salvation by grace through faith not salvation by works. They believe in the inerrancy and infallibility of the Bible. Inerrancy means free from error. Infallible means if Bible says something, it is infallible. They believe in six-day creation by God. Conservatives can easily be identified by four statements in which all conservatives believe and these four statements are in latin why they are in latin because when the protestant reformation came latin was the language of europe where protestant reformation started and therefore these four statements in latin became very common and it will be useful for us to um, know these four statements and uh, it's very easy to remember because English is the daughter of Latin. You will find it easy to 
memorize them the first is sola scriptura in english we say he is the sole survivor that means the only survivor it comes from sola sola scriptura means scripture alone or bible alone the second statement is sola fide means faith alone sola word is now known to you fide might be a new word to you um many of you have seen sound systems which claim to be hi-fi the full form of hi-fi is high fidelity and fidelity means faithfulness high fidelity means this equipment produces sound with high faithfulness so hi-fi or high fidelity means highly faithful reproduction of the original comes from the word fide so now uh, remembering the word fide is not difficult so sola scriptura bible alone sola fide faith alone sola gratia grace alone that's easy to remember because gratia uh, is uh, very similar to grace and many of you have heard the expression gratia in other contexts so sola gratia and then solus that is sola but when used to a person solus christus christ christ in latin is known as christus and uh, christos so these four statements are accepted by all conservative or fundamentalist churches let me mention them once again sola scriptura bible alone sola fide faith alone sola gratia grace alone sola christus christ alone without going into details of these statements let me just give an an introduction bible alone means bible alone the 66 books of the bible alone are the final word in god's communication written communication to mankind there is no revelation outside these 66 books that is sola scriptura or bible alone sola fide faith alone it means a sinner is declared as righteous or justified by faith alone the moment i accept lord jesus as my savior i am declared righteous that process is known as justification you have many bible verses on justification particularly in romans but of them Romans 5 1 everybody should memorize being justified by faith we have peace with God peace with God is old English what it means in contemporary English is being justified by faith we have access to God since we are declared not sinners now we have direct access to God that is sola fide sola gratia means salvation is by grace alone not by human works not by human merits solus christus means christ alone is our savior a large number of churches around us deny these things a lot of things a lot of churches accept solus christus but they don't accept sola gratia grace alone no they will say grace plus human merits many of them don't accept sola fide we are not justified by faith alone we also need to do works sola scriptura 66 books of the bible alone are god's final revelation to mankind there are a lot of churches that don't accept it so please examine whether you have been going to a conservative church 
if not i ask you i plead with you my dear brother my dear sister what is the use of going to a church which is fake which is half true half false try to find a church i am not saying that you all come to the brethren church no no not at all what i am trying to say is in your town try to see if there is a conservative church which believes in the four solas if you find one go there and you will be blessed much much more than the half true and half fake church in which you are going as we proceed in our studies i want to remind you that the foundation of our study is second timothy 3 16 and 17 actually two passages are our foundation but please remember we don't depend upon single verses just because this is foundation it doesn't mean that we depend only on these verses not at all but just as a key theme is essential in the same way i would like to mention two key passages and the first one is second timothy 3 16 and 17 we read in these verses thank you brother johnson for posting that reference if anyone misses my references you can look into the comment boxes where brother johnson is posting these references he will not be posting the entire bible verse at my request second timothy 3:16 and 17 say all scripture is breathed out in today's language all scripture is inspired by god and is profitable for teaching for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be mature or competent equipped for every good work all scripture is inspired by god is one of our keys what do we mean by inspired as i said when we study a doctrine in the bible we don't depend upon a single verse so when this verse is combined with a lot of other verses in the new testament and in the old testament which speak about divine inspiration we understand that the word of god is verbally inspired what is the meaning of verbally inspired verbally inspired means every word in the 66 books is there because god the holy spirit wanted it to be there it does not mean that every word was spoken by the holy spirit no the scripture records speeches of humans speeches of angels it also mentions what the devil said it also mentions what animals said so please remember that when we say bible is verbally inspired we are not saying that every word there was spoken by the holy spirit what we mean is that every word in those 66 books is there because god the holy spirit wanted it recorded there it also means that the word of god is infallible if every word there is there because the holy spirit wanted it then definitely if the bible makes a statement about our spiritual life about our spiritual state about 
about the future of our spiritual life it is infallible it does not fail it cannot fail and since it is infallible we are bound to obey it it also means that the word of god is inerrant if every word in the 66 books is there because the holy spirit wanted it then it also means that the word of God is free of error. Inerrant means free of error. So when the scripture says that the serpent said such and such things to the woman, it means that serpent's statement is recorded accurately in the scripture. We can depend upon the scripture to understand exactly what the serpent said to the woman. Inerrant does not mean that the serpent was inerrant. Please understand it correctly. Inerrant means when the scripture records something, that record is 100% true. So it records a statement of the serpent. That means Satan definitely made that statement to the woman another verse which is very important as a key verse is second peter chapter 1 verses 20 and 21 two verses second peter chapter 1 verses 20 and 21 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21 say, Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. Please remember, uh, the scripture uses the word prophecy in multiple ways. And one of that is, any statement in the Bible that is equal to prophecy. In many places in the Bible, statements of the Bible are said to be prophecy. So what it means is, knowing this first of all, that no statement of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy, that means no statement was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This means that the 66 books that we have in our hands as the Bible canon, the inspired word of God, it is not man's word, it is not man's wisdom. This has to be emphasized because there are a lot of religions around us who have some fantastic religious literature. This religious literature very clearly mentions that they were inspired by man, human inspiration. For example, the Hindu scriptures make it very clear that they are the result of Shruti and Yukti. Shruti means what was heard. Yukti means what is logical. So what they heard, they chose on the basis of the best of the best logic to write down. The Bible is slightly different from that. The Bible makes it very clear that books of the Bible and statements in the books 
they were not written there by the logic of man or by the will of man there are still other religions where it is these things are made much more clear that these religious books are purely human logic bible is different so we should know that scripture the 66 books of the scripture they do not come from human logic or human interpretation they were not produced by the will of man but men spoke when they were carried along by the holy spirit carried along by the holy spirit is a very interesting statement and uh, those of you who have lived close to a turbulent river or those of you who have seen a sea shore you can understand it very well if you have lived close to a turbulent river you know that there are times when people who row their boats they become simply helpless when the river is turbulent they cannot go into the direction in which they want rather the boat is carried by the waves the waves control the boat many of you who have uh, seen seashore or who have traveled by sea you know what it means to be carried by water when the seas roar even the mightiest ship becomes helpless the lighter ones they are simply carried by waters as though they are as light as air when the scripture says that people were carried by the holy spirit carried along by the holy spirit what it means the is that when the writers wrote the scripture they were not moving under their own power rather just as water carries these ships at their discretion in the same way the holy spirit carried these men at his own discretion and the men wrote what the holy spirit wanted them to write here i want to pause for a few minutes and talk about something some talk about a very very serious sin and lapse the correct order would be a very serious lapse taking place in our pulpits and that serious lapse is a sin many many of our people when we stand up for preaching we frequently say paul says this peter says this james says this it has become such a disease that in many bible classes i have counted 50 to 100 times when the teacher says paul says this paul teaches this that is a very serious lapse the scripture says that no prophecy that means no biblical word was ever produced by the will of man not the will of paul not the will of peter not the will of james but men spoke from god as they were carried along by the holy spirit paul is nothing peter is nothing they were carried by the holy spirit and therefore in our teaching when we emphasize that paul is saying this peter is saying this we are emphasizing man's word and do you know ideas have consequences but before i tell you ideas have consequences 
let me tell you how this kind of a speech came into our pulpits this kind of erroneous sometimes even blasphemous statements came into our pulpits it has its history in 1800s in 1800s europe was the richest continent in the world europe became super rich by plundering countries like india java sumatra which were extremely rich in gold silver copper precious stones diamonds and also in um spices spices were selling so costly that kerala's humble black pepper was known as black gold europe came using their naval power they plundered every country from pakistan which was part of india so western india the whole of india eastern india java sumatra and all these countries including sri lanka and when europe became super rich one of the richest countries was germany and when germany became reformed the german government made a decision all the german universities will be liberally financed by the government they also made a decision all theological training will be given by universities not by bible seminaries we all know that universities are run by bureaucrats they have nothing to do with inerrancy infallibility sola scriptura sola gratia sola fide sola christus and very soon the super super rich german universities started hiring atheist theologians they had degrees in theology but they were atheists you may say johnson brother can a person with a degree in theology can be an atheist yes in india we have uh, bible seminaries which are which are producing graduates who are purely atheists so these german universities started hiring atheists as their theology professors and each professor had millions upon millions in funds at their disposal for writing books and sending free of cost all around the world and in 1800 these atheist professors they challenged the world that within a century they will force the entire world to speak their atheist language and when an atheist theologian he spoke about the bible he never spoke about the word of god he spoke about paul wrote this peter wrote this and look at this passage here paul and peter are diverging with each other paul and james are diverging from each other this is the way they talk and they said within one century we will see that your children that means conservative churches would pick up that language and they sent tons upon tons upon tons of the atheistic theological literature to india all around the world people who were going to seminaries since books were very expensive they started reading this these kind of books which are produced by atheist theologians and finally many 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 of them picked up atheistic ideas 
today in india there are a large number of seminaries where professors are 100% atheist yes i mean it 100% atheist and students who study there they come out of these seminaries as atheists they propagate atheistic ideas and surprisingly people who belong to conservative churches such as the brethren and fundamentalist baptist and also local churches now they have adapted the same language ideas have consequences they challenged us and today we are fulfilling their challenge we speak their language it's a very serious deviation when we stand in the pulpit and we say that paul is saying this peter is saying this james is saying this the scripture that we read right now second peter chapter 1 verse 21 very clearly says that no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man it was not produced by the will of peter it was not produced by the will of paul not by the will of james but men spoke from god as they were carried along by the holy spirit and therefore when we say peter is speaking this paul is speaking this we are deviating from the scripture and any deviation is sinful and the consequences are very very much obvious many of you have heard about ata isn't it ata is an accrediting body and many many conservative churches they take pride in ata accreditation brethren bible institute patanandrata was ata accredited of course uh, some years ago they left it during the ata accreditation of patanandrata bible college every year two representatives from the college used to go for the ata meeting at annual general body meeting and let me tell you what i heard in one of the meetings i went there and one of the men there he stood up and he said we will show you a method of devotion so shocking the method of devotion that he presented there was 100% lifted from satan worship and the only person who opposed it we were professors and uh, principals and vice principals from about 100 institutes in india so called evangelical christian institutes and when this man presented this method of devotion lifted up from satan worship only one person opposed it he was at that time the principal of hindustan bible institute the moment he stood up i also jumped up and i said this is 100% satan worship and immediately the organizers came and diffused everything and said okay let us not think of this and professor you drop this method how this kind of a method came in ata because if it is pauls and peters word then what is wrong if we pick up something from um, some kind of a pagan religion a pagan religion given to devoted to satanic ideas that very day when we were sitting for when we were on our uh, table for lunch somebody one lady she was uh, some vice principal of some college some bible college she asked uh, dr philip uh i understand that uh, 
you give a lot of importance to women covering their heads i said lady i don't give any importance to that absolutely no if you think that i give importance to covering of head i don't give any importance at all but the word of god gives importance and therefore i give importance she was so furious oh she said ah uh, paul wrote for his society and uh, there are lot of contradictions in paul this is one of them so i asked madam you claim to be the faculty member a highly elevated faculty member of a so called evangelical seminary what is your bibliology what exactly do you believe about the bible do you believe that uh, bible is the inerrant word of god word of god free from error oh she said how can i believe in an inerrant word of god the old testament is full of error my dear brothers and sisters when we allow our preachers to stand up in our pulpits and declare that a certain thing has come from paul a certain thing has come from peter and a certain thing has come from james we are declaring that bible is man's word and if it is man's word it is open to question it is open to examination it is open to refutation by people ideas have consequences some of the people who are listening to me today you are men who preach from pulpits some of you are sisters who have a very active writing and uh, teaching ministry among women what is the way in which you handle the word of god do you handle it as man's word or as god's word assuming that so far you did not know the implications today you know the implication it is not paul who speaks it is the holy spirit who speaks it is not peter who speaks it is the holy spirit who speaks i once heard a preacher stand up and say there is a lot of contradiction between paul and james i was stunned why this kind of blasphemous statements are being heard from our pulpits because we have forgotten our bibliology bible is not man's word prophets did not speak of their own private interpretation it was not paul's private interpretation it was not james's private interpretation men were carried by the holy spirit and they spoke what the holy spirit wanted them to speak lord willing we will pick it up and please remember no compromise if you compromise we will lose our generations we will lose a lot of young people may the lord enable each one of us to stand strong to the truths that have been entrusted to us once and for all and let us not compromise as we find from god the holy spirit in the epistle of jude dear friends i am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by dr johnson c philip he would love to get your questions please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you please post only one question at a time and make it as detailed as possible so that dr philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean also please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel below this video there is a subscribe button please click it also please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel